Hi and welcome to VFX Tutors. I'm Josh and in this tutorial I'll go through how to prepare your scan and different ways you can retopologize your model to be used in a more production friendly environment. In the previous tutorial we made our projection positions and our low res mesh. So now we'll bring our low res mesh into ZBrush and create a final retopology and transfer our high res details from our scans to our base mesh. Cool, so I've opened up ZBrush. You should have something like this. Um, you can get rid of this window here by selecting the light box. We don't need that. So our first thing to do is to import on our low res mesh. So if we select import, if we navigate to where we exported out our meshes, base mesh, and we'll bring in our SD low res mesh. So let's open, you need to click, left click and drag. Then before you click anywhere else, make sure you select edit. Otherwise you'll just keep creating uh, loads of bread models. And once you select edit, you can now edit the current tool. So as you can see, we've got our mesh in now. It's not great. Um, it's, um, it's our starting point for a quick retopo. Um, and it'll just make things run a lot faster. So we're not having to retopologize a, a full scan. So now we've got that in. We now we can now bring in our scan mesh. So we need to make sure that you select one of these other tools. So if we just select the poly mesh 3D star and then select import and scan projection, select open. This might take a little bit longer. But then it will replace the poly mesh star. And this will allow us to work with two different meshes. So now we've still got our high res mesh in here now. And we need to transfer all these details onto our low res mesh. Which is this one here. So what we need to do first if we're selecting our low res mesh, if we go to our sub tool, we need to make sure that we've got two meshes in our sub tool panels. So if we go to append in our sub tool, uh, sub -tool then you should see in your quick pick your SD scan projection. Select that. And now you can see we've got two meshes on top of each other. So I'm just going to select solo. So now we only see one. You can have both on if you want, but I just find it easier to see solo. So focus on getting the, the low res mesh uh, much better. So first of all, we want to subdivide this. Just the reason why we're doing this is that we did the model in the first place is because it's, it's just a little bit quicker and we don't have to worry about importing meshes in and using some of the tools in ZBrush uh, and if it's not the mesh it likes it might not it may not um, subdivide or remesh how we want but we know that this is a good mesh it just looks ugly so what we can do is go to geometry and divide and we can see we've got it subdivided now. So now we need to go to our geometry. Uh, so we close our geometry and go to our sub tool. Then if we just go to project, and if we look down here, we have our projection tools, and our distance will be set at two. We want to bring that up because we're at such a, a low resolution. We don't want it to be so tight to the geometry because it will probably break some areas. So we can bring that up a little bit. Let's go and set, set project all. And you can now see it starting to take the shape. And the reason why we're doing this subdivision at a time is if we just go, if we just go straight to our um, geometry and just subdivide it like 10 times, it's gonna wrap around into places that we don't want. We want it to slowly, we want it to build on the projections. So you can see even the low res mesh is starting to build in these concave areas. And doing it this way will just give you a much more accurate geometry, uh, uh, much more accurate uh, displacement. So now we've projected that, we can divide it again. Then we'll go to sub tool and project all again. Because it's slowly starting to build up on that mesh. We'll just look around, check not anything, check that things aren't going a bit funny. It seems all right. So we can go back to our geometry 
divide it again. Then we go back to our sub tool. Then we'll just project all and leave it as that setting for now. See how that looks. And it's looking pretty good. I think we're at a stage now where we can actually build our low res mesh. Because at the moment this is kind of if we turn on our our wireframe, we can see the topology is not so great and it's gonna give us some funky bits in this uh, sort of a uh, dugout area. So if we actually go to our geometry, then let's so we're on to subdivision four. Let's have a look. Subdivision three. Let's actually leave it on subdivision four. Then if we go to our Z remesher, then let's select half and select Z remesher. And this will now start to remesh the geometry that we've just made and give it this much better topology. Hopefully it should do it at a much lesser polygon count. It may take a little bit of time. But this is now the reason why we did uh, those first steps is so we can get a nice, we can get our sort of geometry into a, a reasonably close shape before retopologizing it. Too much longer. Cool. So that's the re topologize there. And you can see we've got a pretty good mesh. So if we look around, we can see that everything's working quite nicely. Still quite high. Um, if we turn on our poly wireframe, we've got quite a high res mesh. So we can maybe even try and Z remesh half it again. And see where that gets us. So it's still quite a high high res mesh. We want to try and get it as, as efficient as possible. Let's do it one more time. Reasonable. And obviously it's, it's dependent on obviously the, the lower the res base mesh that you have. Um, you might have problems with displacement in your vector displacement because there's obviously quite a lot of concave areas. So we want to get as much of this in there as possible. So probably going to leave that as it is. It's not super high, but it's, it's not super low either. It's probably going to be lower, but for this case, we're just doing quick assets and it shouldn't matter too much. So now we've done our base mesh, we want to make sure that we UV it first before we go anywhere else. So you can export this out back into Mo or your preferred program, or you can just go to your Z plugin, use your UV master, and Select Enable Control Point Painting. I'll just select Attract. And I'm just going to paint a few around the bottom. It doesn't necessarily always go to this, but. So we want to try and make the UVs here. So I'll go to the Z plugin and just unwrap. It should be fairly quick. Press S to F to frame it. And we can check our UVs by scrolling down on the right, go to UV map, select morph UV. And it's kind of done some weird stuff, but um, let's not worry too much about it. In fact, 
let's actually try that again. Let's try the zip file again. Try and keep this all in one. But you can obviously use it any way you want, but um we'll just go for something quick. So we're just gonna use the protect tool. Let's try that again. More PV. And it's not working too particularly well, so what we'll do, we'll actually export this out, uh, bring this into Maya, and UV it there. So what I'll do, I will go to export, and I'll just call this SD Lures Mesh VO2. I'll cancel that first, actually. So I need to make sure if you go down before you export, make sure groups are off, because then it'll bring in all your poly groups, and we don't want that. And so we'll go to export, which call VO2 save and now that's exported our low res mesh so what we'll do now we'll just quickly open up Maya and UV that and export that out so I have Maya open as you can see we've still got our uh, previous low res mesh and our scan and our plane so if we hit file import and if we go to our low res mesh 2 that we've just exported out from ZBrush, so that's import. And now you can see we've got this poly mesh 3D model. And you can see it's, it's much nicer than our previous one. It's got better topology and those reveals. Once you do that a couple of times, it'll be really quick. Um, and you'll be really efficient at doing it as well. So, we want to UV this, because uh, I wasn't too keen on ZBrush auto UV, so one of our problems that we'll have with the, if you just turn it off, with the ZBrush retopo, it kind of retopos things in a coil, so we'll have to keep an eye out for that. So if we actually go to our UV editor here, we can see we've got our UVs that ZBrush has made. Which, which could be okay, really, if um, you weren't that fussed about it. If we turn on our, let's go for this. Turn on our checkerboard, see how that looks. I didn't. The, the reason why I didn't like it is because everything's kind of pinching around this point, and all this stuff here is kind of gross. But because we're projecting on it, it probably won't matter too much. But if you wanted to paint over the top of it, it might be a bit of a nightmare. So. We kind of want to fix all this. So let's minimize that. So if we just go to UV and delete UVs, I have to select my model again. And you can't make UVs, you can't uh, re sew UV edges without having UVs. So once we've deleted it, we have to select UV. I'll just select camera based. Well, that's done, that's just made a camera based projection of the UVs. So you can see it's all stretched around, but it's given us our basic UVs. Now if I go to my edge mode, it's going to be quite difficult selecting edge loop just because of the nature of how ZBrush does it. So 
we try and select our edge loop, that's as close as what we want. So I would probably say that's quite a decent one. So it goes around. It loops over the top, we can delete those. So what I'll do, I'll just, I'll just add uh, edge down here. So join it up. So I'm just holding Control Shift. So now I want to hold Control, and it should say minus, and you want to deselect all these edges. So we don't really want them. This is what we're going to use to make our seams. And you can make this better if you if you like. Um, I'm just going to try and do it as quick as possible. Let's pull it around. Not any other ones checked by accident. So that's kind of a, a jagged angle here, but let's not worry too much. Just go. Let's go to a UV toolkit. Cut and sew. Cut. Now, if we go to our UV editor, hide right click. We can go to a UV shell. Select that. And we'll go modify. Select. Oops, I don't know what we can do. See that? Modify. Oh no! I just selected straight UVs by accident. So it finally came back to life. I clicked on the wrong thing, it did some really weird stuff, so let's uh, undo that and make sure you, you don't click string. Let's use unfold this time, <laughs> and there we go. And got some seams that are oh, we may have missed a seam here, so let's just select those edges. Cut again. So if we select UV shell, modify, unfold. What we can do, we can do the same for this one. Select UV edges for this, unfold, modify, unfold. And now we need to move this into our area. So if we select our box, our checker box, we can see we've got some sort of stretching stuff here, but it's nowhere near as bad. It's, it's much better. So if we select both of these now, we want to make sure we scale them into the box. And it depends on what, how, what, how much detail you really want on these assets. Like one tile should be more than enough. But um, we will just squeeze it all into one tile now. Probably won't need units for anything like this, so it should be a bit overkill. But if you're doing game assets, you might do it like almost 10 times smaller and have like maybe 20 different types of bread in here. But for this case, we'll just leave it in one tile. Cool, so we're all in one tile now. Close that, close our UVs now. Move it to object mode. And we want to re export this out now. We can call this SD. So res mesh D2. Uh, we've got a namespace on here, so what we'll do, we'll just go for Windows, General, Namespace Editor. And let's just delete all our namespaces. Select small, merge root. Cool. So now we've got our mesh that we've retopologized from ZBrush. And we've UV'd it. So now we'll export this out and bring this back to ZBrush. So file, export selection. And we've already got the low res mesh version 2 from our export from uh, ZBrush. So we'll just call this version 3. Important not to get mixed up, but our version 3 is our now one that's UV'd and one that will put our final detailing in. 
export the selection and that's exported now so now we'll bring go back to the zbrush and import this back in cool so we're back in zbrush now we've got our old mesh in here so what we can do is if we go to our Poly mesh 3d star again and we will import in our third and final low res mesh so we've got our sd low res mesh vo3 so open and now you can see we've got our mesh in here so now if we go to uv map morph uv we got some more sensible uvs now So now we go through the same process of um, adding this to our sub tool because we've currently only got our low res. We've already imported our scan projection lessons, so we don't actually have to do that again. So we can go to append and select our scan projection. And if we turn off solo, we can now see it's there. back to wax red you can have it any colors everyone uses wax reds on this so so i'll just turn solo back on and this is now our final low res mesh so what we can do we'll go through the same process as before we will go to our geometry we don't need our zebra and we'll just divide it then we'll go to our sub tool We'll just bring up our distance so we're not projecting so tight to the mesh straight away. And we'll select project all. And we'll just go through the same technique as before. We'll just subdivide, then we'll project. So go back to geometry, divide again, back to subtool, project all. And obviously the, the, the higher the resolution of our mesh, um, the longer this may take as well. Turn off our poly wireframe off as well. So if we turn on our solo, we can actually see we're getting pretty good detail now already. So let's go to our geometry, let's divide it even more. You can see we're on quite a high res mesh, but we can go quite high because we're not going to be using it. We just want as much detail as possible. So like project all. So it starts to take a little bit longer. You can see we're getting all that really nice detail on our low res mesh now. So let's go to our geometry. Uh, let's subdivide it another time and because we're getting because we've let it sort of uh, project all the details onto the high-res mesh and we've gone up sequentially through the subdivisions we can actually now when we go to our project we can lower our distance and it'll bring it a little bit tighter to our projection uh, to our scan geometry but obviously lower this is this might take a little bit longer Project all again. Hopefully, it'll start giving us some really, really nice tight details. This is going to take a little bit longer. We probably don't really need to go any more than this, but we can we can try it anyway. It's almost done. 
if we look through, we can see we've got some really nice uh, details. We can also see the holes that we'll need to fix later on. Pretty much done. We can try one more subdivision. We can compare it against the other one. You can see there's, there's very little amount of difference between them. If we can select it. You can see our scan. Our low res is, is barely any difference so i think i'm probably just gonna leave it as that now so what we can do we've got these these kind of lumps at the bottom where our support poles were and we can just quickly get rid of those because we don't want them around whilst we're here we may as well so all i'll do is i'll use a, a clay build up brush um, Let's turn the alpha off for now. I'll just stick it on freehand. So now I'll bring my intensity down a little bit because I don't really want to uh, dig too much into it. I just want to remove this. If I hold Alt to do the minus, okay on that. And I'm just gonna try and roughly get rid of this. We might have some funny edges, so I'll just hold Shift to try and smooth it out as well. I'm just going to use my clay build up to try and remove this sort of lumpy bit. It might take a while to sort of go back and forth. You can see we're kind of losing some of the detail, but let's not worry too much. Let's just smooth that out. And we can sort of let's at least try and match the bread. I'm just going to rough it. Oh, no, it's not exactly perfect, but we want to sort of block out the smoothing first. So we're not doing too much. I'm just around all these edges and sort of just use the clay build up to remove some of that nastiness. Hold shift and left to smooth it a little bit. Kind of looks. Unfortunately, I don't have my uh, graphics tablet with me at the moment, so I'm using a mouse, which isn't the best. Cool. So we've kind of roughly got it. This is no masterpiece, but we obviously it's not great at the moment. So what we'll do, we'll just stick an alpha on it. Uh, we'll just make this alpha. See how that looks. Let's bring in our draw size a bit. We'll try and it's not going to be exactly the same, but it's not going to be as noticeable. Smooth it. Sticks in this gap. Let's try and fill that in there. Try and get rid of this regular sort of area. Hopefully, you won't notice it as much, but obviously. Just go into the areas that are kind of not as effective. And 
think that should be okay. Oh, it's not going to match perfectly, but it doesn't look as much like a, um, a hole anymore. And if you didn't know it was there, you probably wouldn't have noticed it anyway. So we'll do the other one. We just turn off that toggle first. Let's, uh, oh, let's turn our intensity down a bit. Oh, same. Let's undo that. Let's just smooth it a bit more. Let's just get rid of these edges. Build up sort of make it a bit more normal. Let me just turn up alpha back on. Turn up its raw size a bit. So let's just have a look at that. Sort of see some reminiscent of a surface shape. But like I said, you probably only know that was there if you knew it was there. So pretty happy of just getting rid of that. So I'd say we're pretty much done. So if we just press F to center on our model, zoom out a bit. And you see, if we go to our geometry, we only have five subdivisions. Um, if we just go all down here first, and you can see our low res mesh. Cool. So we've we've sort of cleaned up our bottom bit. We've um, transferred our textures, uh, not our textures, our sort of details over to our low res mesh. So our next step would be to export out our mesh from here again because it would have slightly changed for more high subdivisions and then export out and bake our displacement and vector displacement maps. So if you've enjoyed this tutorial hit that like button and subscribe for more like this.